or 215? Which is your choice? Yeah. 210. So we just kind of made a shift there without having a whole, you know, possible meltdown or, or why I want to take, you know, a bath at, at this particular yeah. time. So it's just, it's very, um, a lot of predictability on my end. Um, I'm trying to kind of, I don't want to say manipulate, but kind of yes. Yeah. Into like, okay, well, we're not doing this now. We can do it at another time because that's another thing that we are working on with him is patience. That's and I feel my personal opinion is that for so long, he wanted to say something and he couldn't. That now is like, he just says it and I need to do it now. You know, and he's very time. He loves the timers. So if he. Hola, comadres. Welcome to the 12th episode of Comadriando. I'm your host, Marcy, and we have a very special guest today. Her name is Yari, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Who are you? Hi, guys. My name is Yari. I am a mom to uh, two boys. I'm a wife. I'm a sister. I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. Awesome. Okay, um, so I met Yari because she's actually a fan of El Salon. And when I was on for the episode of um, Super Teacher, Super Mom, Super Teacher, Super Tired, she was one of the people that gave feedback saying that I should have my own show. So Yari was the brain, ch- was the inspiration <laughs> for, this, <laughs> for this podcast. Um, so... And we're also now part of a WhatsApp group, which is very powerful. It's a group of moms of children with special needs. And basically, we're providing that community aspect for each other and like being there for each other. Because I feel like, I don't know if you feel the same way. I feel like a lot of people really can relate to us in a way. Um, Absolutely. You know, they, they're moms as well, but it's not, they, we, they don't face the same difficulties that we do. Yes, absolutely. So that's why. So I'm shout like, out to Susana. Yes, and Hazel for uh, for creating the the group. Like it's really dope. Um, yes. So today's topic is very important. It is about safety and routines. So it's something I know that me and Yadi have been working on, on ever since they were little. Um, you know, ever since Aiden was two years old, then he got diagnosed, and it's something that never stops being reinforced because. You know, sometimes <laughs> they forget or they think something's okay and it's not okay. So before we get into the topic, I just want to kind of get like like the mind, my new details out of the way. So what's your child's diagnosis? So he's diagnosed with autism. Um, he was diagnosed at 20 months. Um, we actually... Um, started the whole process with early intervention when he was 15 months. Okay. And then um, what was it that you noticed that was different about Matthew that made you want to get him evaluated? Well, um, he met all his milestones when, you know, all the way through his infant stage. And when he turned 15 months around that time, I noticed that he was not really looking directly at me, um, Mm kind of like looking through me, Um, I guess, you know, you may understand. Mm -hmm. Um, Like looking past if you weren't there. Yeah, um, he was looking like in my direction if I called him, but not really look at me in the eyes. Um, And then he lost all speech. Um, He would say before, he would say mama, dada, bye-bye, and he'll wave and he'll say like little things like, you know, um, bottle, and then he just lost everything. Oh my goodness. Like he was not speaking, he was just humming. Um, those, that's really what kind of like gave me the flags that I needed to speak to, you know, his pediatrician. Okay. So once you spoke to the pediatrician, because the thing is like, I, I'm going to do an episode on milestones, but I feel like it's important because not everybody goes through the same experience. I feel like Matthew and Aiden's experience is similar and that they both yes. lost speech. But uh, once you once you spoke to the pediatrician, what was that process like of getting him evaluated? Um, she was very dismissive, to be honest. Um, you know, I told her my concerns, and um, 
I I have been familiar with, you know, special needs children and adults because my brother-in-law has an intellectual disability mm -hmm. and my only brother has three children on the spectrum. So when I was actually, I have a 13-year-old as well, um, neurotypical 13-year-old. Um, mm -hmm. So when I was pregnant with him, um, we did the whole genetic testing. Um, we did um, um, even... You know, they was brought up for me to do the that testing where they take the little fluid from the um the back of the neck. So you did genetic testing for your son, and then you ended up for Matthew's pregnancy. You did the amniocentesis. No, um, that was they suggested that for my first son. Okay. Um, because of the intellectual disability that my brother-in-law has, which I did not want to do. You know, it's like, you know, if what's going to be, it's going to be type of a mm -hmm. thing. Um, but oddly, I didn't do it with Matthew, of course. So, um, but, you know, she was a little bit dismissive. So I just went ahead and decided to just go on my own, do my research, go through early intervention and, just started from there. Wait, so she never sent the referral for to have him evaluated? Well, she told me to wait um, until the next appointment and see if there was any type of um, progress or, and then we would kind of take it from there. I didn't want to wait. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I just kind of started going from, you know. Because Matthew's your second baby, so you already know, like, developmentally, once a child starts speaking, they don't stop speaking. And and uh, yes. that's a huge red flag. And the fact that pediatricians are, like, saying, like, my pediatrician did the same thing. She was like, oh, no, just wait and see. I'm like, wait and see? No. I was like, he's 18 months. He, exactly. He, was talk he had about 25 words, and then all of a sudden, he stopped talking, which was, like, a big thing. I was like, what is going on, you know? I've been around children my whole life and that never happened. So that was like a huge right. impact for me. Exactly. So then once once Matthew got diagnosed, what was it like like those early years with him and and in early intervention? Um it was tough in the beginning. I mean, Matthew was a little tiny, you know. Um he started services at 16 months. Um and um I had a great ABA therapist which kind of told me, you know, autism is what most likely the diagnosis will be. So why don't we start working on, you know, techniques for, you know, to help him develop, which I agreed. It was very tough in the beginning. Matthew would cry for two straight hours in that, but he will comply mm -hmm. to any, everything that was being said. Okay. Um, and then little by little, he started warming up to the therapist. And then when he turned two, then he went into, you know, the little school. And um, he was there until he was four. <laughs> and then he, when he was turned, when he was going to preschool, we actually had to, um, we toured a couple of schools. We didn't feel that it was the right fit for him. Um and I was very involved with the CPSC office and all of that. So we actually, she actually told me, if you're willing to travel to Hawthorne, New York, there is a great wow. school there where, you know, it will be something maybe more of what you're looking for. Hi. <laughs> um, <says> which, <laughs> which we did. And that's where he went to school for two years. Okay, so how did you feel about that school? Was it like specialized in ABA therapy or how was it? Yes, it was an ABA-based um, center, um, which would um, put the children within their profile. So it was a 6211 setting. And, um, and they would put them with the same, kind of like the same profile. So it was not like, you know, you have a, you know, someone high functioning or, you know, more verbal. And then Matthew was the one not speaking. So it was pretty, everyone kind of in the classroom was in the same 
pace and they were very involved with the family. So we all kind of worked together into like, you know, um, the things that we wanted to target for him, um, haircuts, you know, um, toileting, um, food toleration, um, speech, all of those things were in place that made me feel much more comfortable. I felt that some of the schools that I visited, it was like the same diagnosis, they're all in the, they're all in there. <laughs> So to me, I just didn't want him picking up things from other children and vice versa. I didn't think it would be a, a consistent progress or regression, whatever that journey would look like if we were all mushed together in one classroom. Yeah, I agree. Um, even though sometimes I feel like heterogeneous groupings, like having a kid that's higher with a child that is not speaking will give them like the como a model for them to like you yes. know aspire to for speaking but then again like those kids that are speaking like you know is it gonna influence them like for example like matthew speaks a lot now so like you know putting him with yes. a kid that's non-verbal and like stimming vocally how is that gonna affect them academically and also socially so i i, I see right. both sides as a teacher and as a mother as well Yes. So talking about routines, like how did you help like through the ABA and what the work you've done with Matthew, how did you help him get like a sense of normalcy or like a like build routines into his daily life? Well, I mean, I guess it, I guess it depends on which side people kind of want to see it. Um, since he was so young and we kind of established he will get to on the bus at the same time. He will come home at the same time. The therapist will come after school at the same time. So he was just so kind of like, I don't want to say a motor, but it was for him. That's what, you know, he, 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 it was expected and he knew it. Matthew is very fixated on predictability. If it's something that's unpredictable, mm -hmm. he just doesn't like it. And that's when kind of like we're working on self-regulating and how to cope mm -hmm. with, changes yeah um so i think that i guess like i said in the way that you see it it could be something that's um it could be a blessing it could be you know challenging at times but he thrives off of it he loves it he loves to know what's going on and i think we kind of given him the liberty you know matthew is a very experienced based person he likes to see things he likes to be a part of things you know, uh, I know that the stereotype, yeah. right, the, you know, that they say is that they're not social or they're not empathetic. Matthew is the most social little guy. He'll, he has no shame. He can go and <laughs> say, hi, I'm Matthew. And just, you know, kind of go from there. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what he thrives on. You know, he loves to just be, you know, having experiences. So we kind of given him that freedom of where let's try it. And then if you don't like it, I have headphones. I have everything you yeah. need. I carry with me to make sure that, you know, that this is an enjoyable experience. Okay. Up to your toleration. I love it. Um, so yes. What do you do when there's like unexpected or unprecedented changes in the schedule, like to help him cope? Like, what kind of strategies are you teaching him to self, teaching, teaching him to self regulate? Well, now um, he's no longer in that school. Um, he's in a different school now, which it's more of a life skills based. Um, you know, you have your academics, which is great. But for me, what's most important is his life skills. He can always catch up. Although, you know, he's very bright, um, you know, thankfully. But, um, you know, f to me, it's important any type of life skills. So we have been working with him on um, teaching him techniques that he can self-regulate mm -hmm. or he can add now that he's speaking more fluently. is like we're teaching him how to, you can ask why, you can ask when, or you can give your sense of opinion on like, okay, so we're not going to the park anymore. Now we have to go, you know, to grandma's house. And he can ask me why, but it's always, uh, 
we can do this now, but we can do this. So giving him the option, like, uh, like, uh, like, okay, this yes. is not happening right now, but we can do this instead. Like, I feel like that's really important. A lot of parents, uh, especially how we were raised, I feel like we're we're the same age, right? Yadi, eighty three. Okay. Yes. So yeah, so we're the same age. Yes. So the way we were raised, it was kind of like, Ute va a lo que dice mami, and that's it. Y tu, you can't question. And that's anything. it. But like exactly. teaching our kids to question and 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 giving them a response, not kind of like because I said so, is very important because like they don't they don't see the world the way that we see it necessarily. Exactly, and to me, it's very important now that he is able to speak. Um, of course, he's not. He doesn't speak like a neurotypical seven-year-old or eight-year-old. But now that he has a voice, I want that voice to be validated. So his opinions yes. matter, and his and they, they're valid. So um, I want him to be able to advocate for himself and ask questions, and because he we work so hard for him to get to where he's oh, at now. Um, he really, he's seven now. He really started speaking in sentences maybe two years ago yeah that's important so it's not that long ago so to me now it's like whenever there's any discipline because we do hold him accountable because he understands so we try really to have that balance mm -hmm. with him um and kind of giving in in the kind of he likes to feel that he has control over certain yeah. situations so it's like okay well um for example um he wants to take a bubble bath. He's like, I want to take a bubble bath at two o'clock. Very specific. And I'm like, mm, okay, Matthew, um, well, we have a choice. You could take it at 2.10 or 2.15, which is your choice. Yeah. 2.10. So we just kind of made a shift there without having a whole, you know, possible meltdown or, or why I want to take, you know, a bath at, at this particular yeah. time. So it's just, it's very, um, a lot of predictability on my end. Um, I'm trying to kind of, I don't want to say manipulate, but kind of yes. Yeah. Into like, okay, well, we're not doing this now. We can do it at another time. Because that's another thing that we are working on with him is patience. That's and I feel, my personal opinion is that for so long, he wanted to say something and he couldn't. That now is like, he just says it and I need to do it now. You know, and he's very time. He loves the timers. So if he is supposed to sit for 15 minutes, he will put his own timer on his iPad and he'll sit for the 15 minutes. And it's just, you know, the bus comes at 732. We need to go down at 729 so that he can just stand outside. He does his little walk. And I record him. He oh, does yeah, this yeah, little yeah. Um, walk in place for autism, for, um, you know, for our friends in that platform. Shout out to Puzzle yes. Life. They're also a great platform. Amazing. We get, we, they will welcome those with open at arms. And we could talk about that because, like, I feel like I want sure. to give them, like, a shout, like, a proper shout out and, like, explain what it is. That Absolutely. Doing. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, he he's very routine and time driven. Yeah. And like this one time, um, he gets out of school at a certain time, and he's the first stop on the bus. So he's usually home maybe maybe 15 minutes after school stops. So he, there was a problem with the, with, with oh the bus God. that they got stuck. So the bus driver calls me. He's telling me he needs to be home at 2.36. So he was just. It's very sad because he was in home on time. So things like that are a little um, challenging. Um, but I believe that with very open communication to the people that you're working with, um, you know, because we all have to work together, teachers, you know, um, bus personnel, I, you know, we, we kind of have to all kind of have that open communication that this is what it is. And let's try to fix it rather than a whole discipline view of it trying to de-escalate rather than discipline yeah. i feel like i use that a lot with my students especially like 
because I have a lot of kids that were like math deal in my classroom and it's kind of like you know is this a big deal or a little deal and they're like it's a little deal I was like it's okay if you feel sad <laughs> that's okay to be sad and I kind of like redirecting them so that they don't like harbor yes. in that emotion for a long period of time um with Aiden I feel like not that I was seen by Buenza. it's like you know I do he has his routines but I always used to kind of like spice it up because I'm like I would see the students I had in my classroom and I'm like I don't want him spazzing out if something doesn't go the way that he thinks it's supposed to go even though he still has like an overall routine of how the day goes um yes I feel like he has a routine even like to go to the bathroom like at a certain time he uses the bathroom and um yes bus broke down girl and this was actually this year poor Aiden it was like five o'clock and he was stuck on the hundred eighty first and um what is that avenue? It's like right before you get on the West Side Highway. Riverside? Yeah, I think it was like Riverside. Ime Jamara, they're like, Oh my god, Aiden is telling us that he needs to get off the bus because he needs to use the bathroom at five o'clock. And I was like, Oh snap. So I had to take a cab and there was like so much traffic. It was actually like a Thursday afternoon. So I'm like rushing from here, like it's only ten blocks. Rushing from here over there to get to the thing. And Aiden's used to using the bathroom. He's not used to like using, like peeing in the street. So I'm like, Yes. Papi, you know, same. Like, you can take out your wee wee. You're going to pee pee here. He's like, No, mommy, there's a restaurant right there. He had already scoped it the whole time he was on the bus. He was like, <laughs> Looking around, he's like, Pa donde yo voy a coger bus al barrio? So he's like, restaurant in the corner. Can we go over here? And then he went and he took me to the restaurant. He asked the waiter. He's like, may I use the restroom? <laughs> and he took it. Wow. Well, bathroom. you know, <laughs> I, th I think that's amazing because I think that another, um, you know, kind of behaviors that we see a lot, because I know I've been asked about it a lot, is constipation and, you know, using the restroom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, and Matthew doesn't go... You know, he doesn't have a bowel movement outside the house. It doesn't matter how long we're out. But when he gets here, then he goes. Everything is all good and dandy. Um, so, um, but the, the thing with him is like waiting, right? Like if we're in the car and he has to, you know, pee, he's like, but I have to do it right, right now. So there's no time to like, hold on. So it's, it's I feel like it's anything regarding routines and, you know, uh, uh, safety is just such, uh, uh, it's, it's an ongoing journey. It's such an ongoing journey. He was also in the beginning, um, he would think every yellow school bus was his yellow school bus. So he would, at one time he tried to run oh across the street. So that was like something that I needed to, trigger like right then and there so you know with him is always like a conversation before anything happens so we're going downstairs you're not gonna touch like the wall on the building because you know it's dirty all right i was like so you're not gonna do this so what are you not gonna do and then he'll repeat it i like for him to repeat it back yeah, to so me that you know that he understands right and are we gonna touch the bus that we're going to run to the bus? No, mommy. So he actually learned the numbers on the bus. Wow. All the numbers on mm -hmm. the bus. So he goes, oh, one, two, three. That's my bus. Aww, so cute. And then he'll start scripting because he learned everybody's bus route in the oh school with who goes in. I remember you told me that. And I thought it was like the cutest thing ever. <laughs> and then he says it at home. So he's just at home, just chilling. And then he's like, you know, one, two, three, Matthew and John and Camila. And it's like, he'll say every single. So I recorded him and sent it to the oh teacher just because of safety purposes yeah. of like of the other yeah. children. I'm like, is this okay? Can you? But it's like it's something can be undone, right? He already learned it. And it's like, you know, but we're teaching him the you know privacy and inside voices yeah. and you know so it's it's you know it's with him it's just it's a constant I thing feel like it's our just... kids are so special like it like i had a, a one student that he learned the train station maps so you would tell him wow. 
um, you would be like, uh, I'm not gonna say his name. I'd be like, John, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it from the school, and I need to get to Penn Station. What train can I take? Well, Miss Campos, you can take this train to this stop, and you're gonna transfer, and you're gonna go this Beautiful. way. Yes. And I'm just like, wow. I was like, I really don't need, you know, MapQuest. So not MapQuest because I'm dating myself right now. But <laughs> whoa, <laughs> I need Google Maps to figure that out. But it, it's like that's like their superpower. I feel like once they like really into something, it's really bananas. But yeah, safety is like a big thing because they. With Aiden, he doesn't think about consequences. Like, if I do this, yes. I can be in danger. So, I don't know if Matthew ever had this, but uh, Aiden was obsessed with these blankets. So, I had a quilt that um, I bought when I was, I want to say, I talked about it in the uh, cars, planes, and trains. I was like 20 something. It was like one of the first things I bought, like bedspread. So it was a quilt and it was really old and it was really soft. And he loved these quilts. Mr. Aiden threw it out the window because he wanted to see it fly. Okay. And oh. then after he threw it out the window, he's like, okay, let me go get it. I was living with a roommate at the time. Oof. Nana, he went to the door, opened the door in his underwear, barefoot. Ran downstairs. Been there. <laughs> ran downstairs to the front of the building. Um, and got the blanket, right? I thought he was gonna come back upstairs. But like I'm like in the bathroom actually, like using the bathroom, and I'm telling my roommate's daughter, I'm like, Aiden's leaving the apartment, you need to go after him. And she's like screaming at the top of you know when people don't know how to handle the situation? Because she's a yes. little girl still. So she's like screaming and then her mom's not getting him and I'm just like running out of the bathroom, put on something. I was actually wearing like, you know, one of these house batas or whatever. So I'm like running yes. downstairs <laughs> and I, I happen to see the neighbor. She doesn't live here anymore, thank God. But this chick opens the door and he goes to the actual street like where the cars are Ooh. if it wasn't because of this one kid that i know i know him from like the longest shout out to omar if he's listening omar chased aiden like bolted down the street because he was going from our street to saint nicholas oh, bolted down the street after nino to grab him and like was able to bring him upstairs and i was able to bring him upstairs but let me tell you, they have no sense of danger. It was to a point that he was like opening the door. I had to put the little chain, like install an extra when I had one and he was able to reach it. I had to put one at the top yes. and I'm already short. <laughs> so I had to put one at the <laughs> top you. so that he, he wouldn't be able to use it. And I'm just like, wow, like it's they have no concept of danger and it's like those little Not things like all. like what matthew did with the bus like those little things that you think it's not a big deal but for them when they perseverate on something it's very hard for them to break that um at one point también when he was younger he was like three oh no he was like four years old he was obsessed with logos so he liked all kinds of logos so he would take the credit cards from my from my purse and look at like the mastercard symbol the visa symbol and he would stack the cards put them together and then he would hide them from me and put them under the pillow but then the logo thing yeah. got like even more like he would like want to get newspapers because he wanted to see the logos of the food and then it, it got to a point he was like obsessed with like spectrum like the cable company like like the cable company huh? was it spectrum no optimum optimum uh-huh Había un truck. There was a truck of Optimum across the street from my mom's house in Jersey. Él no salió corriendo del patio to go touch the truck. Oh, wow. Thank wow. God. Yeah, I mean. A sign that said, like, a, a child with autism lives in this house. So the people that were, like, driving, like, slowed down specifically for that. And we were able to get them. But right. But it's like, you know, implementing these routines and like, kind of, like, foreseeing where your kid could, like, make a bad decision. Yes. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yes. What were you going to say? No, that's fine. No, it's like, you know, the same thing with that is I know we spoke about the swimming classes that he takes. We, you know, just went on a vacation and then he just did not have any sense of that. That pool was six feet. <laughs> he just went straight in there. You know, my husband really just and he grabbed him. Uh, so to me, that's very important because I had a 
you know, driving an incident when I was young. So I'm already carrying that trauma oh through life. So I just said, you know what? This is something that is very important to me. And getting in that particular program, it's hard mm -hmm. because it's the demand is there and it's just the one, right, in the city. So, um, and that was, we had to just, get him to start those swimming classes and learn those techniques of, you know, the breathing and the, you know, and he loves that so much. He's so focused on it. It's like, that's the one thing, right? Like when they're like fixated on the one thing, they just mm -hmm. focus. Their focus is just amazing. And, you know, now he's just kind of swimming on his own little by little, but that's just, that's where these life skills techniques and it's like you have to have like eyes in the back of your head let me tell you and the, and the, the thing with kids with autism i don't know if our listeners know but people with autism uh one of the leading causes of uh, of death unfortunately is drowning accidents you know and it's yes. because you're so drawn to the water like i remember aiden used to have oh my goodness he used to play with the water in the toilet i don't disgusting but <laughs> he was already big he was like seven years old like matthew eight years old and he would like want to play with the water in the toilet or he would fill up the bathtub he said metia without asking me first so yes, it's like i feel yes. like once we put him in the reach swim that was like a little bit of a, a I was able to relax a little bit more i mean even though he was he's still learning how to swim but that was like one of the best investments of money that I've made because honestly thank you el, el, el medio barrio suto. like in the cars plays and trains episode I, I know you listen to it but he yes. took off running and like threw himself in the pool and I was I had my my heart was here in my throat but thank god he exactly knew how to swim. he was able to get in and like swim to the other side but I don't I'm not a great swimmer so I was like freaking out but definitely no and then like it's like in those moments mm -hmm. you don't know how you're gonna like i freeze sometimes i just like <gasps> and like i just freeze and i just mm -hmm. can't you know but you know with with matthew and you know back to these routines it's like i have a sign on the door that says only mommy and daddy open the door i even have um dealing with change i even had a picture of a bus right a, a, a calendar i'm gonna show you right so it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay. Thursday. So we he got fixated at some point that he did not want anyone to take him down but myself. Ah. And then I have, you know, dad has a work schedule. So it will be sometimes I would take my other son because he's also hard to keep a balance, right, between the siblings, you know. Um, and mm -hmm. so we had to make him a chart and then we'll put a picture and then purposely we would change it at the last minute and they would be like matthew so today mommy would take you down but tomorrow and wednesday daddy would take you down or you know we'll give him some sort of a preference um but it's like we have these signs all over the house we have another sign with the routine like i wake up i brush my teeth i drink my milk and then Aww. kind of like and then on the other side we have if things change then We'll go to the other side. But to him, having that sense of control and kind of seeing things is like, you know, so social stories, he thrives of these social stories, know you know, and then he learns them and then he's scripting them over and over and over and over and over again. Let's take a sidebar. So um, I don't think I've talked about scripting on the show yet, um, but I think you I think you mentioned maybe something mentioned with it briefly. But scripting is when um, people with special needs, particularly people with autism, repeat a certain dialogue that they have learned either via TV or in a book or that they've heard other people say to help them cope with changes in their routine. So um, they do that to make themselves feel comfortable. So I know Aiden scripts all the time. Um, Yep. <laughs> the thing is, like, he's learned yes. how to use it appropriately now. So it, it's really, it's interesting to see. But yeah, like, I love the fact that he internalizes that and like scripts whatever it is that's going on to help him understand what's going on in in in, in the situation. Um, 
Yeah. And I love the fact that you guys are like actively working on helping him be comfortable with change. Most of the time with Aiden, like sometimes there's, as, um, you know, dealing with other people. I try to like tell him ahead of time, like if things change, I try to tell him like the minute I know so that it's not like a surprise later on. But sometimes like um, I'm with people that are a little bit uh, unpredictable or, or things change last minute. Like, for example, you know, you can't yes. control other people. So um, just like having him be OK with that. And I kind of, you know, I usually like try to use rewards, too, because like if he does a really good job and there's like a change in schedule, I'm like, listen, man, you can have that juice because I mean, I try not to give him things with sugar. <laughs> But I'm like, yes, you earned the Hawaiian punch. Have at it, my friend. Because <laughs> listen, for me, it's hard, and I'm a, t- I'm a neurotypical. I get adult, it. You know what I'm saying? You imagine a kid. I remember when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, my mom and dad. My mom's a Taurus. I don't know, but like they're very um, they change their 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 minds about things last minute, and then they just expect you to kind of like go with the flow. And not that I was like very rigid, but. If I'm expecting something and then like it just changes, they went up a primera. You didn't communicate with that with me. Um, even now, as an adult, I feel like I get not upset, but I'm just like I don't want to do whatever it is that the new right. activity. Right? Yeah. No. So I put myself in Aiden's place and and like Matthew's place, and I'm like, yo, you know, it'll be nice if you know ahead of time so that your mind is like wrapping yourself around this change in routine because like honestly i feel like routines are very important and it helps people you know become more successful and to be able to to do more and 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 be more comfortable in their environment honestly oh yeah i mean i i agree he he just you know where since he loves um, social stories and you know his scripting so much it's like we always try to do oh what are we gonna do if something changes that's okay so he'll talk to himself changes happen and that's okay and I can ask mommy why and I can ask my teacher why so you know it's like and then I feel like in the beginning he doesn't really have the understanding but he'll repeat it repeat it repeat it and then he'll kind of like, okay, now I kind of get where we're going with yes. this. <laughs> um, you know, if things change, it's it's it's. Uh, we try to give him all the tools mm-hmm. that he needs to be able to self-regulate, or you know, the busing is is always a a. a mm. I feel like we need a, a roller coaster. Need to do a whole episode on busing. I have all the miles oh my god the coming. Yes, you, there like was a. T- biggest- the biggest problem we have as moms of children with special needs is the busing situations. Oh my God. And the lack of communication oh with schools God. and parents yes. is just, yes. So the bus, um, you know, they had changed the actual bus. So the bus, when it hit the brake, it will make this particular noise. No more. So Matthew is sensitive to low noises and certain pitches. So it was like to the point that he would just not get on this bus. And we gave him all the tools. You know, the the school even gave him an iPad so that he can just travel with it, the headphones. It was even to the point that the teacher would come in the in my to my house in the morning and would work on that social story with him as he's going on the bus. And it was just something, a change from like Tuesday to Wednesday. I hate that they do that. Like, sidebar, this is, like, the most annoying thing in the world. Like, Aiden was fine. Like, they had a routine. The bus was coming on time, finally. And then from one day to the next, it was not even on a Monday. It was kind of, like, middle of the week. It was, like, Wednesday. Right. Oh, you have a new bus driver. I'm calling the matron. I'm like, hey, guys, um, are you running behind schedule? Oh, it's a different bus. What? Who was going right. to tell me? Yep. It's the same route. Exactly. It's a different driver and a different matron. I'm like, how? I'm like, do you guys understand that you're working with people with special needs that are used to certain routines? Right, right. I The one thing I like about the school that Matthew is in is that prior to COVID, unfortunately, um, they had a particular day that they had breakfast with the bus personnel. So they'll invite them over for breakfast and they'll kind of educate them on, you know, autism, um, special needs and, you know, having that 
community, you know, relationship that we're all working together, um, you know, to help me help you make the ride for him Mm -hmm. for for you easier. Um, And it's just, you know, we've gone through our huddles, but, you know, thankfully, you know, we have, I, I'm, I love communication. I just, it's just the way that things can run smoothly. And I'm always available to people that, you know, if there's anything that I can do to help him, to help you, then just let me know so that we can all work together in order for things to be in place. I mean, because I can only imagine he went from having, when he went to Hawthorne, he will be on that bus for an hour and a half. And he was completely fine. So we knew there was something that was just not right with this new particular bus all of a sudden. Something that was that it w- And then, right, and then as we, like, because I even got on the bus. I had to ask for permissions and, you know, fill out this paperwork and contact a bunch of different offices for me to get on the bus with him. Mm-hmm. And I will see him. It's like, and that's another thing about sensory that a lot of people don't understand that it's a, it's a physical pain to them and I would see him cringe and then we lost we lost him and then because of that he has such a good memory that he knows that that is gonna make a particular noise I'm not getting in there there's no way you're gonna get me in there and there's no way so it's always a work in progress to be you know um constantly working with the teachers and you know uh, everyone really to just communication with him him having that sense of control and knowing what's going to happen. And when they don't, for him to understand that we're teaching him these tools to be able to, you know, he does his breathing exercises. He does, um, you know, sometimes he likes to be squeezed or, you know, like those squeeze hugs. And sometimes, you know, it's different things for him, um, depending on what it is. But anytime he's uncomfortable, well, I think anyone that sees my son, he has the headphones on. Yeah. And then when he's comfortable, he'll take them off. And then it's, you know, <laughs> smooth you sailing. Know, it's funny. It's that Aiden's thing is um, he doesn't he doesn't like the sensation. These are actually his. He doesn't like the sensation of the headphones on his ear. But when you know that he's comfortable, like if he meets you and like, let's say we go have a play date with Matthew and he takes off his shoes. Ja, Aiden's your best friend. Because that's his thing. Like, he, when he's comfortable with you, he will take off his shoes in your house and, like, feel like he's at home. And he'll find, like, first he'll go investigate everything. Yes. He'll go check out everything. And then once he knows what's in your house, he'll go sit down in the little corner in the living room and he'll take off his shoes and he'll be there. But, like, it's it's so interesting. It's like, you know, I love the fact that you touched on, like, having a team and having open communication with the people that work with your son is super important. I feel like people don't understand that because a lot of the time people are like, Eso muchacho, que lo que tú vas a explicando, que si yo que? no, our kids need communication and um, to set expectations for things that will happen. Absolutely. It, you can't just drop things in their, in their, in their, in their lap last minute and expect them to just be perfectly fine with it because most of the time they are not and then they they will either vocalize it by speaking out on it or they will show you through their behavior that they're not happy with the changes that are going on in that moment absolutely it's even with even his bedtime routine like there's a certain if something happens if i don't know an unexpected guest come over and it's this time he's already moody so he understands that I cannot go to bed right now because this is Aww. happening, but he is just like, you know, a whiny and it's, and it's like, you know, so you can already tell. So it's like, okay, Matthew, like this week that we're on break, mm-hmm. he's just so uneasy because it's off routine. Uh-huh. So I kind of had to take a step back and say, hey, so you know that it's Christmas. So Christmas, we play with our new toys and then oh, I go to school on Monday. No, Matthew. So Monday you can rest. Mm-hmm. rest <laughs> you can sleep mm-hmm. in and then we can have breakfast and then you can what do you want to do do you want to read a book do you want to and then he's like ah uh, but like on for example on days that it was like remote learning or 
when things suddenly changed, it was very hard for him to kind of adjust. Yeah. So he was very fidgety and going up and down, trying to use the yeah. tools that, you know, he's been taught, but still like, I don't like this. When am I going to school or where am I? Cause he loves it. You know, it's an environment where he feels safe and it's a sense of comfort that I know what's going to happen. I know what's expected and I'm, and I'm going home and I'm going to be a safe. A lot of kids thrived in that environment of remote learning, a lot of kids on the spectrum, but I feel like Aiden likes that social piece. Like, even though he's he does, not yes. like, fully social like a neurotypical person but he likes to be around other people so you know just being in the house sitting in front of a computer the whole time it was like for him in his mind i feel like he was feeling at one point like what's the point um and then and then of course exactly. there's like certain teachers that are just like oh it is not paying attention in the class i'm like he's used to seeing you in person exactly. and you're on a, and then they and then when they went back in person, I don't know if Matthew had this, but there was teachers that opted to be remote. So they're sitting in a classroom with the assistant teachers and they're listening to somebody on a computer screen. By me, okay, so you're not I'm a neurotypical adult. I would have been like, why exactly. am I here? <laughs> and, and you imagine them and then and like the fact that the teacher is actually complaining about them. Like, are you kidding me? I'm like, yeah, yeah I mean, that, that did not happen. He was so looking forward. And, you know, I, I, the transition to back to school in person, you know, like we started working on school started in September. We started working on mass toleration in July. So he will be, you know, for an hour, we started with 30 minutes and then gradually um, he'll have the mask on while he was remote. And then, you know, building that, you know, anticipation for him and for him knowing and why uh, he, I, he doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't understand COVID. All he knows is that I don't, you know, I, I can't get dirty. I can't touch mm -hmm. that. I got to wash my hands, give me my hand sanitizer and I got to keep a mask on. But the specifics, you know, obviously he, he's not aware of, but, you know, by having him go through those steps you know, little by little is just, it's so beneficial for him. I mean, not everybody's the same, mm -hmm. of course, but for him is, you know, it's, he, he, he thrives off of it and he needed that. He really advanced a lot academically, I believe. And in some, um, um, life skills, like finally using the restroom, like mm -hmm. totally off mm -hmm. everything. It happened during oh. lockdown. Um, which is great, but socially I felt that he was, he didn't want to, you know, um, they will have a morning meeting or afternoon, um, reading and he would just not want to be around, um, you know, certain kids because of, you know, they, they might stem or whatever else. So to him, it was like, oh, wow, I didn't expect that. So I think that socially, it was very hard for him to kind of get back. But once he was back, you know, and the environment was very safe um, where, you know, in his school. So I feel very comfortable getting him back from yeah. the get-go. When, when, um, when we started last year, remember we were like remote at the beginning of the year and, um, there was like an option to have them come back in person because Aiden's classroom, well, his school is small and because the ratio of like students to adults is very low, he was able to go back. I want to say like uh, mid November last year. Um, okay. But before then, like I had to pay somebody to be here while I'm remote teaching and then helping him to be able to do right. his classes. That must have been so hard. You know, Joe, I, I used to spend like $500 a month and shout out to those people that helped me with that. You know, yes, it was a, a job, but at the end of the day, like that was something that I needed to do to be able to have him be able to participate. And even then, like he, the minute he went back to school, it was like nothing had happened and he was perfectly fine with wearing his mask. He did need verbal reminders once in a while, but like after the pandemic, he couldn't have a, um, a bus para because there was nobody that lived around um, our neighborhood. So I was able to, I got him a cell phone. And then with that too, like the routines is like, you know, doing the little mantras in the morning. Okay, our phone goes where? 
and he has to tell me like in the backpack and our ipad is for what it's for work and like all these things like this little exactly. checklist in his brain to remind him of the appropriate behaviors um también another thing that i found that, uh, with the changes of uh, in routines and going back it was like he was tending to lash out a little bit and it wasn't even against the kid it was like more teachers like they'd be like well you can't do that and he's like well why not you know what i'm saying and they're like well because we said so so then it was it was like a back and forth kind of thing so it's like you know reminding him of the appropriate behaviors and things that are okay and not okay to do at school um but we've talked a lot about matthew so tell me about matthew tell me more about him like what is his what are his little things that he loves like who is he what makes him sparkle like Oh, is Matthew into? is just like a little ray of sunshine. He is very, he can be very loud. He loves, you know, having, I don't want to say making friends because to him, you know, he just goes in like, here I am. And hi, my name is Matthew. And, you know, he loves to, He he's very empathetic. You know, if his classmate is sad for anything, then it's his sadness oh God, too. Yes. And he, he just takes things so to heart. And, you know, I think that that's is so great. But then he's sometimes the other friend is okay now. And then he's still like within those I feelings see. like, oh, why is he so upset? Um, you know, he loves being around people. He loves experiences. I like for his birthday, he wanted to go indoor skydiving. Are and we're like, twins, okay. Aiden decided to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did it once. Yeah, he did it and once. then he was scared. Yeah. yeah, he did it the one time and then he was scared. But I like that because, you know, I don't want him limited. And that's why he, lo he loves experiences. He loves going, you know, to the farm. Then, you know, he loves going on an airplane. He just, he loves all of that stuff. Um, you know, his person is his older brother. That is his person. Like, so he gravitates a lot towards older kids mm -hmm. because of that. So uh, with kids his age, um, it was it was also a work in progress of like, oh, you know, he can be your friend too, especially after lockdown, yeah. because it was just him and his brother the whole time. Um, he loves his, you know, he loves his cartoons, his Peppa Pig, his, you know, he's just, a, a, a ball of energy oh my goodness. everywhere <laughs> yeah he loves to he he loves getting um recognized for things so he likes and that's why some of these you know implementations of routines and things that they're they are successful with him because he loves having that certificate that says matthew did great today and my whole refrigerator is full of 39 certificates in a month and there's only 30 31 days but you know they give him a certificate forever and he loves that he loves bringing it home he has a sense of pride yeah. um you know he's a very uh, uh you know driven like if it's something that he wants to do he'll do it and he wants to dance he'll go ahead and dance you know um so he's he's just he, he's inspirational to everyone in our family because you know it's this little tiny person because i am short <laughs> so you know he looks like a five-year-old in a seven-year-old body but you know it's, you know and it's i mean he's just very resilient he's not scared of anything yeah. and you know he's just he's he's just a pleasure to have around yeah <laughs> not because he's my son but you know <laughs> i love i love um seeing your pictures of him and him doing his little walking in place for autism that like makes me so yes. happy and the fact that he's kind of like you know like he says something about it is like so sweet and like he's such a he's just like that smile is just warms your heart and you can see i i yes. know that he's gonna go on to do like amazing things as he gets older he's such oh. a good kid from your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> yes. Uh, so let's get a little bit serious. I want to talk about like, what are some of your fears or reservations as the mom of a child Ooh. who's going to become an adult with autism in the future? Yeah, I really, you know, like I said before, life skills are so important to me. Um, you know, I want him to be, every time they ask me for his goals, it's for him to be independent in all 
with all shapes and forms of it. You know, I want him to be able to, um, you know, live on his own. And, um, you know, my fear is that, you know, him not having that support because, you know, when we're, ha when they're small, you have early intervention and then you have, you know, all these different tools that can seem hard to get, but they're there. But as he's growing up, it's, it gets a little bit harder to find support, to find, you know, um, um, uh, programs, vocational programs, um, you know, uh, to help him achieve, you know, his dreams or whatever it is that he wants to do. I fear that, um, you know, interactions with the community yeah. to me is something that I think about all the time. How would he be with law enforcement? Um, you know, because sometimes he can be fidgety. Sometimes he can be, you know, not comply at that right time, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, being Hispanic on its own is already a worry male, right? A Hispanic mm -hmm. male is already a, 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 a concern for the future, you know, um, it, it, I, I think just the resources and I don't want resources to end kind of a thing you know it's always going to be a work in progress you know with him and you know I wish to live to 183 but yeah. <laughs> you know so that's really my fear you know I want him to be able to have resources to be independent and um, deal with the community um, it's a cruel world out there and um, you know, I, I, I want, we want to keep our babies in a bubble, but that's not reality. So, you know, going to college, even high school, even now where they're, you know, the school is telling me that he may be ready for a less restrictive environment. I'm already freaking out about that because it's like, I mean, where is he going to go? That means that he, he's, he's it is amazing. Right. But, you know, you, I always see that. You know, I, I, we have to look at things from different perspectives, right? I mean, teachers have their perspective. Moms have. I really try to be impartial and really see the things that he can thrive on and the things that he still needs, you know, help mm -hmm. with. Um, but the future is just, it, it, it looks bright and scary. Yeah, because it's something that we, we, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. So that's, that's, I feel like that, that's where the fear comes in a little bit. <laughs> But I feel like yeah. he has an amazing mom and an amazing dad, and you guys are going to help him thrive, and, and he's going to continue to progress. The fact that he's going to be in a less restrictive environment because of the progress that he's making in school is, like, very telling on, yes, the work that the teachers are doing, but also the work that the parents are doing. Because at the end of the day, as yes. a teacher, if the parents are not on board and, and doing the things that they need to do to help their child, um become more independent and and learn nothing that we do in the classroom is gonna really make a difference like it can you know like in the moment exactly. it's fine but then once they go home if they're going back to the same environment and nobody's um reinforcing what they're learning in school especially social skills wise then the, it's like we're teaching into a black hole like nothing is gonna change you know yeah, I think, you know, it, it, it's, it, we all have to work together. I don't really see, I know it happens, but I just don't see why we wouldn't work together. <laughs> Even, you know, with my oldest, I'm always in communication because, you know, you, you, teachers have their job, but we, everything starts in the home. Everything starts with us. And, um, you know, even, even now when, you know, Matthew's starting to really let out his feelings. And sometimes he's like, oh, but those kids don't like me. And, you know, just that aspect of it. You know, I, I feel like there was a moment where because he didn't understand, um, it would be if, if he had any rejection, it wouldn't face him because he didn't really know what was going on. Mm -hmm. But now we're going into the, I know that they don't want to play with me. He doesn't understand why. And it's like, but mommy, he doesn't want to play with me for whatever reason it might be. So I think that is something that is always going to be a fear of mine, especially in the future where I can walk with him holding yeah. his hand or, you know, um, it, it's it, I, I want him to be able to take what comes and have the tools to understand that not everyone 
it's going to be like mom or dad or, you know, or my brother or my teachers. So it's, 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 it's so hard. And it's something that although we don't want to think about, we kind of do all the time. Yeah. Um, that's one thing, uh, the comadres know, and you know, too, like my goal of this podcast is not just like to talk, you know, just to have chop it up with people. It's like, ultimately is to create inclusive environments where our children who will be adults are accepted and, you know, praised for their differences. Like it's okay not to be the same as everybody else, you know, and, and, and creating awareness as well, which is why I love what puzzle life is doing with the, um, walk in place for autism. And I'm going to let you like kind of explain what it is, what the project is and, and what the goal is for the project. Yeah. I mean, I, I happen to find, you know, find them, um, and, you know, it's a platform that has welcomed, uh, you know, not only my my family, you know, uh, you know, anyone with special needs and not only autism, you know, it's any type of special needs. So um, the point of the hashtag is that, you know, we're walking for 30 to 60 seconds. You know, we're walking for, you know, people with disabilities, mm-hmm. the people, you know, the people that can't talk, that can't walk. Um, and it's an amazing movement um, from their part. Um you know, and I think that particular platform has led me to meet, you know, wonderful people, um, you know, especially, you know, um, him, um, Midtown and his wife, you know, you know, you also have Snipe, um, you know, which they do um, lives together. And, you know, it's also about resources and, you know, understanding where the parents are coming from. And that is a household situation. Um, you know, and it's just bringing awareness. And I think, um, there's so many hashtags for everything, (laughs) you know? Um, so it it only seems right, you know, and, um, they also had one for the month of December that started the month of December, you know, about bullying and, you know, and they, I mean, it's, it's a great thing for our community to send the message, um, of, you know, they, you know, we matter, we matter, we're here, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. Um, you know, if you don't know one, if you don't, if you don't have a child, you know, somebody or you know of somebody or it's just, you know, so I, that platform itself, you know, I really want to shout them out because they just really have that community, you know, based interaction, you know, they've done toy drives, they, they have done backpack um, giveaways and it's um it's great for us to have so that because we're not alone and it yeah. could feel isolating because sometimes even our our family and friends don't really understand what the journey is or why you have a a, a bag with three chargers and two pairs of headphones <laughs> and you know, you know. <laughs> three external batteries <laughs> thank you <laughs> A cell phone, an iPad, a backup cell phone, a, you know, a Game Boy, you know, so it's, um, you know, that, you know, along with the with the WhatsApp group, I, everything kind of correlated, you know, yeah. like I found, you know, this platform. And then from there, I met someone who led me to the WhatsApp group. And, you know, I just really want to offer my son the best that there is out there. I want to give him the opportunity to, you know have you know swimming classes or have you know these particular interactions and i want my story to try to help somebody to you know that it's it's a very tough journey but you know it's a rewarding journey there's highs there's lows and that you know we're here to help each other and uplift each other and understand each other because it's not always just chatting it up Mm -hmm. but you know sometimes it's hard Meltdowns are hard. <laughs> Changes are hard. And, you know, I just, um, I, like I told you, I, I, this needed to happen. Your podcast needed to happen. Uh, it's just something that I wrote. Like, I, we need more of Marcy. <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> What's her plug? <laughs> All right. So, comadres, thank you so much for tuning in today. And as usual, how I usually end the podcast is... Follow me on Instagram at Comadreando Pod, and you can follow Yari at Yari six eight three 
Y A R Y six A three um is my um it's my Instagram. And then um, you know, if you have any questions, if you want me to bring Yadi back or if you want to bring more moms from the group back, which is another episode that's probably coming uh, soon this season. Um, just send me a comadregram or slide up into my DMs. Uh, you can send me the comadregram on my email. It's comadreando at escthenetwork.com. And thank you for spending a lovely evening with your comadres. Yari and, Yari and I are actually recording right before New Year's Eve. So I want to wish Yari a very, very happy and healthy New Year full of full filled with abundance, love, and happiness. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being a voice for us. Um, thank you for, you know, always being so graceful in your responses. And, you know, Happy New Year to you, to Aiden, to all the, you know, the moms out there. A safe yes. New Year, hopefully, you, you know, we can all be in a group in person, yes. finally. I'm dying to, like, you know, for this to go back to normal, for us to be able to bring our babies around each other and, you know, Beef. Absolutely. 